Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Tom Kelly, and this is Clean Cut Audio. This week, I'm going to share with you a huge change in my workflow that not only saves me a bunch of time, but also makes me a lot of money. I'm going to share it with you today, and I'm going to thank those that inspired me to make this change. All right, let's do it. I want to quickly shout out Max Graham, who made this suggestion on one of my earlier videos on strip silence. After seeing my time lapse of going through and making all of these cuts, he recommended that I change my delete key to something that is more accessible to my left hand, so I'm not traveling back and forth on the keyboard so much. After watching this time lapse, I've realized I'm leaving a lot of time and money on the table by not creating my own custom hotkey for deleting audio. Now you can go way down this rabbit hole. There's a lot of programmable devices. Uh, the Elgato Stream Deck, for example, you can customize all these keys to do different functions and different macros, but I'm going to keep it very simple and I'm going to talk about the one thing I introduced to my workflow besides the Kensington trackball that made a huge change. And hopefully this will inspire you to dig further into all of these things you can do to customize your workflow to save yourself a bunch of time. Later on in the video, I'm going to go over how I program this in Pro Tools since I'm sure a lot of you are not in Pro Tools. I don't want to put that at the front because most of you probably don't care and I'm I'm also going to show you a little bit of math on how I gave myself a significant raise by implementing this into my workflow. So let's do it. Let's take a look into Pro Tools here and we can see that in one of my sessions uh, there's, there's a lot of cuts, right? I'm mostly doing all of this through strip silence, but a lot of these things I would be highlighting, moving my hand over and deleting it, right? So let's just drag out this whole track here and we can kind of display the difference between using the delete key how I was and what I'm currently doing. So all of this stuff here is just superfluous noise. I don't really want it in the signal. So we could highlight all of this, delete it, hand back to the other side of the screen to hold shift and scroll. And I'm going back and deleting, zooming in, right? Trying to catch this and delete, delete, right? Lots of back and forth. And I imagine I never mastered the piano because I didn't know where the keys were worth without looking at them. And I imagine that to someone new to editing, it's constantly looking down, seeing that delete key. And really it's just the hand is traveling back and forth. And we can probably count the milliseconds of how long it takes my hand to travel over to this delete key. And the thing is, in a typical podcast, I'll be making... 2000 cuts and if we start to add up all of those milliseconds by the cuts that i'm making it adds up to minutes over the course of a 60 minute podcast 2000 cuts it really really adds up and we can see that this is already a ton of work that took way too long to cut out three minutes of audio so if we're not using strip silence and we're doing this manually, you know, we'll save more time if we do strip silence, but we can see that I have moved my delete key over to command tilde. And what that does is it allows my hand to not travel back and forth on the keyboard so far. So every single cut that I make, it's saving. Look at that. I just did that same amount of work, I believe, in... I don't know, a quarter of the time by not constantly back and forth looking down, breaking eye contact with my DAW, all the back and forth. And last summer was the busiest that I've ever been editing. I edited 27 podcasts in five days in addition to creating my own. And when you're adding up those minutes that you're saving per episode times four every day, you know, 25 a week, man, you're getting a lot of time back. So I encourage you to, whenever you're editing, try to keep your hands centralized. So my left hand never crosses the T on this keyboard. So when I am navigating, I'm using my pinky for shift to scroll back and forth with my trackball, um, switching between my editing modes with uh, my middle finger up here, 
R and T a zoom, but I can do all of those without moving my hand. It can stay like glued to the desk here and it's all happening here. Everything else is on my trackball, and that way I'm not losing accuracy of, you know, you meant to hit delete key, but you accidentally hit some other thing and you're wondering why it doesn't delete. Your muscle memory is already in place. So you're trying to move on to the next one, but the action never took place. So if we keep this real close, real central, and there's not a lot of movement, there's more accuracy. And speed is the sum of accuracy and efficiency. So with less movement, we have accuracy and we have efficiency, which will result in speed. We can't just frantically move faster because then you're probably going to go down on accuracy. So this is the perfect combination that will really help us save quite a bit of time. Now, as promised, I'm going to do a little bit of math for you. I got my whiteboard here and we're going to take an average of, let's just say 2000 cuts and say that by not moving our hand back and forth, we're saving a quarter of a second, right? That seems pretty okay. So we got a quarter. Oh, that's not a, <laughs> that my friends is a Sharpie. Here we go. All right. So we got 2000 times a quarter of a second, right? So that's 500 seconds that we're saving 500 divided by 60 seconds to a minute ends up being i cheated eight and a third minutes so we're saving 8.3 minutes per episode let's just say hypothetically by moving just moving that delete key that's the only thing now there are days where i'm doing four or five episodes a day let's just say eight times four right so we got 32 we're saving 32 minutes every single day when we add that to my hourly rate it's significant so every day that $75 that I'm not leaving on the table by being more efficient with my editing. I'm saving myself a half an hour, which is 75 bucks a day, okay? So if we add that to our hourly rate, we're getting a pretty big raise. Most people in a nine to five job, they're hoping for, I don't know, a $2 an hour raise per year. You can give yourself a massive raise by being more efficient in your workflows right now, immediately. $75 a day we can be getting back or a half an hour of our time, whichever is more valuable to you. A lot of people editing their own shows, there's probably a lot of stuff you can do if you're not a professional editor to become more efficient. And this is just one tiny piece of the puzzle. I have other videos on my channel for how to implement different tools and input devices to be more efficient. But for the professional editors who are looking to make as much money as fast as possible, this is again, one small piece in the puzzle to make your work go faster and to help make you even more money. All right, so how do we set up this shortcut in Pro Tools? There are other DAWs that have it built into their preferences. You can just add your own shortcuts and it's a lot easier. Pro Tools is a little powerful yet outdated in terms of functionality with more modern DAWs, maybe not industry standard, but more modern allowances. So what we have to do here is we need to find the function we're trying to create a shortcut for in the menu. Now I'm trying to find delete. So it's going to be an edit and we can see clear. Now I already have the shortcut made, but what we need to know is exactly what this function is called. It's called clear. So in a Mac, I'm sorry, I don't know how to do this on PC. I haven't owned a PC in a long time. So we're just doing Mac. But if we go to the Apple system preferences and we're doing a keyboard shortcut, so keyboard and then shortcuts. Now we are going to navigate to app shortcuts because this is going to be a shortcut only for Pro Tools. And we already have Pro Tools in here. We're going to click the plus button and the menu title is again exactly the thing we're trying to create a shortcut for. In my case, it's clear. And then the keyboard shortcut, I type in command tilde and there you go and you click add. Now I already have it in there, but that is how you create your own hotkey for Pro Tools. There's probably a lot of other things that I could do in here. I have a couple other ones here, custom shuttle lock speed I've changed to something else. Um, long ago now it's just on my trackball so that's one less combination of things that i have to do 
but that is how we create a hotkey for Pro Tools on a Mac. So I hope you found that helpful. And what I really hope is that you will take this tiny little tidbit of information and really explore what you can be doing to make your workflow more efficient. There are so many things that I've implemented into my workflow that make me an efficient editor and make me more money, get more time back to give to myself or my family or whatever. So I'm always looking for ways to cut milliseconds because milliseconds multiplied by thousands of times a day add up to a significant amount of time. We don't need to try to cut out five minutes. We need to try to cut out a hundred milliseconds, a tenth of a second, because we're going to do that a lot. So look into your workflow, see where you can be more efficient. Look at, there's forums, there's podcasts about workplace efficiency. One of my favorites and the one that really inspired me to look into my own systems and processes was the podcast Cortex by Mike Hurley and CGP Grey. Especially the first 20 episodes are pretty crazy, but their whole podcast is about workflow systems processes for creative entrepreneurs and it's great. Both of them are podcasters. One runs a podcast network. So there's so much cool stuff in that podcast. I cannot recommend it enough. Thank you for tuning into this episode. Please subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so that you never miss a video. Lots of cool stuff, editing tricks, mixing tips, all that kind of stuff. Leave a message in the comments. Let me know what hotkeys you have created for yourself and how much time it's saving you. I would love to hear what you all are doing because there's so much work that I still have to do in order to make my workflow more efficient. I want to again thank my Patreon supporters for helping me produce these episodes, take the time away from my editing work, and allow me to create this content for you all. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. If you'd like to check out the Patreon, it's patreon.com slash cleancutaudio, and hit me up on Twitter at cleancutaudio, and I have a podcast. You can find that at cleancutaudio.com slash podcast. Tons of supplemental and really interesting content that's slightly different than the YouTube channel. But that's it. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate you. I love you all, and I'll see you next week. Bye.